Hey guys and welcome back to We New Wonders. Today I'm going to be filming a video for the Fillet series finally after a billion years. The reason why I haven't been able to film one of these in so long is just because the books that I picked up to be able to discuss on here didn't turn out to be the kinds of books that I thought they were and I never want to do anything subpar for this series. I mean I never want to do anything subpar at all but I feel like with this series there's extra pressure just because it is about my culture and there aren't a lot of other sort of source materials for you guys to cross-reference my videos against so I just feel like if I fuck this up I would like fuck up a billion percent today I'm going to be talking about hybrid projects or different books that cross or blur the lines between different genres I feel like this is something that Filipino authors do really really well I just feel like our culture is a mishmash of different conflicting ideas that wouldn't coexist at all if our history wasn't what it is. For those of you guys who don't know anything about the Philippines or our history, suffice it to say that we got colonized by everyone and their mother. So we're a very collectivist society in the sense that we have very strong emphasis on family values which is definitely something that we got from the Spanish and we also are sort of really really kind of obsessed with drama and so soap operas and k-dramas do really really well in the Philippines but at the same time we are very Americanized because the Americans colonized this too so there's always this conflict between sort of individualistic and collectivist themes in literature especially in these hybrid projects that I'm going to be talking about. First book that I want to talk about is by an author who I already did a poetry talk video on so I will link that in the description bar below. This is Elsewhere Held and Lingered by Conchitina Cruz. Oh my god, okay. Where do I even start with Conchitina Cruz? Or Ching Bi, people call her Ching Bi. Um, I think the thing about Ching Bi's work that is very very interesting to me is that she's able to take that forwardness of narrative or prose and tie it in perfectly with that depth of exploration of poetry. One of my college professors told me that the difference between poetry and fiction is that with fiction, the momentum is sort of moving forward. You're trying to get to an end point or you're trying to tell people a sequence of events. Whereas with poetry, the events are already set. It's not about what's going to happen. It's about what's already happened and you sort of explore the different levels of that. I think the thing about Ching Bi's work is that she gets both. The way I imagine her work as a graph is always one that sort of goes both forward and inward, if that makes any sense at all. You'll find so many different crazy things in here, but it's never just for the sake of being crazy. Like she has some stuff that is written like prose, and then there are sort of footnotes that help you better understand what's happening or that sort of deepen or change what your initial reading of it was. Oh my gosh. And then she has some stuff that leans definitely more toward the normal or sort of traditional sense of poetry. Another interesting thing about this book is that it's one of those rare poetry collections that really has a cohesive theme or a cohesive narrative. It revolves around a persona who is in a failing marriage and about what it means to have a marriage fail, what it means to make a promise like that and find that it just isn't the thing that will sustain you or it's not something that you want to push through with. It also explores things like how you deal with wanting to be happy or trying to find love again in a situation like that. This does have a lot of sort of gray moral scenarios because um, I guess this is kind of a spoiler but not really because this isn't plot driven as narrative as it may be. Um, we sort of find out from the start that the marriage is failing and that she does find someone else who she feels like she loves and someone else who she has an affair with. This is kind of funny because just yesterday I was talking to Katie from Books and Things on her channel about how we're sort of really sick of this trope of people having affairs and I'm like, oh yeah. I was like, oh yeah, I'm so sick of that. And okay, I'm gonna discuss a book that is basically about that. But I think the thing which makes this worth the read is that you can really see the proper problematization of this thing 
they're doing and also it never asks for your sympathy. I think that's my major pet peeve when it comes to books that discuss affairs or which have people having affairs in them is like okay so you did this thing but don't ask me to sort of empathize with you and strangely enough because I'm not asked for any empathy I find myself giving it or giving at least a sort of semblance of trying to understand what the persona is going through and this is just a really really well written collection. Next I want to talk about The El Bimbo Variations by Adam David. Adam is just, he's crazy. He's one of those people who I feel like just really has a very creatively wired brain because he's done everything. He's done poetry, prose, comics, um, sort of web projects and those are really really good as well. He does these randomizers which are sort of internet projects that have different sort of random words fed into a website and when you click go it sort of takes these different scenarios and builds you a story. It's really really fascinating. I will link it in the down bar because I know that I can't talk about this properly but anyway <laughs> this project in particular the El Bimbo Variations is one of my favorites because it's so freaking creative it centers around a song called Ang Huling El Bimbo by the Eraser Heads. I'm sure that there is a translation of that song somewhere and um, if you guys haven't listened to the Eraser Heads, I think you definitely should they're worth checking out so these are just a hundred sort of ekphrasis works about that song and sort of giving a different layer of meaning to that song and also sort of discussing what it means thinking about what that song has to hold or to offer in terms of meaningfulness and the way that adam does it is so creative so he has some things that are sort of more traditional poetry like this and then he has some things that are like visual sort of um, appropriating that old school ad slash movie poster aesthetic and then he has um, word search type things, tarot card type things and it's just really 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 good and really really interesting and just so freaking creative. I feel like if you guys ever see this book anywhere don't hesitate and just pick it up because it's amazing. Like. Of course, I'd say that it's better if you knew the song and <laughs> it's better if you understood the song, but even if you don't, I feel like I feel like it would be an interesting thing to read anyway. Next, I want to talk about Millennium by Chael Samaniego. I reviewed this a couple of years ago, I think. Um, but this book is just so freaking interesting. For one thing, it's shaped like a cassette tape. This tiny book, I don't know what you would even call it. I guess you would call it interconnected short stories if you really had to pick something. You could also call it a novel. I feel like you could argue either way because it does that thing where it's very a visit from the goon squad where it sort of um, tells you different stories to tell you a bigger story and I really really like this the way that this is written is sort of like a labyrinth it's the story of lost love but every time that he gets closer to the point he sort of circles around it again and talks about something else and I just really really like it I feel like this is sort of an exercise in how much you can say about something else before you actually get to the point which is also very very Filipino because Filipinos hate confrontation we are a very passive aggressive group of people I would say and we're sort of rewarded for that passive aggression all the time and so I found this really really interesting to read and just such a good work of fiction in a way that's done so uniquely and so well. This next thing that I'm going to be talking about isn't actually out yet and um, if you guys follow my work diary series, this is actually a project that's going to be launching the same day as Sentimental Ashtray. This is a tarot card narrative project that is being released by my friends Erica and Niobe who are both on the editorial board of Plural Prose Journal with me. Anyway, <laughs> this whole project is called A Descending Order of Moral Significance and it's really really interesting to me. It reminds me of something that Italo Calvino would write. If you guys aren't familiar with Italo Calvino, he 
really likes playing sort of literary games. This very much reminded me of his book, Invisible Cities, and it's like it tells a story by giving you a different piece of a story and sort of piecing everything together yourself and it's really interesting to me the way that that can be broken up because I think that usually you would structure a story like thinking about it like setting, plot, blah 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 but what if you have all those things and what you're dealt is a sort of cross section of that where everything coexists at once but it's not complete like you need everything else I just think it's genius <laughs> I will read you guys the back of this The Medium your spouse had left you, telling you you have forgotten how to mourn, that you were never there, that you stared at the body with the same coldness you have for countless other bodies on the slab. How you had looked at signs on flesh, ticked off a checklist in your mind, confirmed cause of death. But on the morning of your child's death anniversary, you will feel a constriction like an angel sitting on your chest, accompanied by just the slightest tingling in all your extremities, and you wish you could run to the other side of the world and say, Look, love, look here. My body remembers. It is a miracle. I will link the Facebook page to this below because I know that they've done a lot of sort of info things that are really, really interesting. Last but not the least, I want to talk about a recent discovery of mine. This is Heavenly Bodies by Osterex Gamow, and it is sort of micro fiction, very short fiction accompanied by um, sort of artwork that's been sort of collaged and um, done in this very DIY sort of seroxography zine form. This also has a theme in the sense that it follows um, the different planets and sort of really plays on astrology and um, the stars, heavenly bodies as the title suggests to talk about different things. For example, there is a story in this where sadness is seen as a commodity and it's just, it's so interesting. Like people go shopping for sadness and when their bags are heavy enough, that's the only time that they can sort of swap it for a little bit of happiness. And I just, oh my God, okay. On a in a literary sense, um, I think that's a really interesting short story. It was really, really well done. And on a wider sort of sociological sense, they say that Filipinos are like some of the happiest people in the world and they say we can laugh at anything. But in a recent survey, actually, it showed that most of the Philippine population is severely depressed and in denial. <laughs> and I think that Austere's work definitely gets that across. So that's it for this episode of Fill It. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys will find a way to sort of check these projects out. I will leave all relevant links in the description bar. And um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to help me make more bookish videos, there's a link to the tip jar below. That's it for now and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!